I got this kit in my Lobe called Hobby Store for 395 pesos. So before seeing the contents, practice safe disinfection to avoid the spread of the virus. Hashtag stay safe! Inside, we have our plastic model kit unassembled. Instruction manual that also contains the scholar schemes and decal layout. And finally, our decals. The first thing to do always before you start building is to clean the plastic model in a water vinegar soap mix. So that, according to what I have learned from a reliable source, it removes grime and dust lingering in our model. Hence, giving them a clean mix to paint we will apply later to adhere better. You can use any kind of vinegar that you have, but it's better I suggest is the white vinegar and any dishwashing soap that you can have in your home. Now our model is all clean and sparky. Let's wipe it off dry and we can start assembling our kit. As we build on this model, let's talk about the small history of this aircraft. If you want to know where the source that I referenced to when I'm making this, you can head down to the description and you can see the links that I took reference to so you can read more about this particular plane and its other variants. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video and share it to all your friends and family in order for you to keep update of the uploads. Now without further ado, let's go on and learn about this plane's history. The Supermarine Spitfire is arguably one of the most iconic fighter planes that saw its action during World War II. It was operated by the Royal Air Force and other allied countries in which its operational service had spanned even before and after the Second World War. So for today's video, we will learn about a small history of the Spitfire Mark V B drop. In the late 1940s, the RAF had predicted that the Luftwaffe will enter the different approach in attacking Britain through the means of a sustained high altitude bombing. After knowing that they had been testing a pressurized cabin Junkers Ju-86 bomber to spawn such kind of threat by the Luftwaffe, the RAF is in need of a pressurized version of Spitfire incorporated with a new Merlin engine which takes too long for it to be developed at that time. Hence, they needed an emergency stopgap measure while the new development of a fighter is underway. This was the birth of the Mark V. For this build, we have the Spitfire Mark V B Strop, which became the main production version of the Mark V's. The said fighter in its basic form is simply a Mark I with some upgrades slapped into it, as well as a desert camo is used, hence the Trop in its name, which stands for Tropical. The aircraft utilizes a new B-Wing configuration as a standard feature for this variant. A modified A-Wing to accommodate two Hispano Mark II 20mm cannons at a cost of the four .303 Browning machine guns in the innermost gun wing bay, giving only two machine guns on each wing. It is also equipped with a new engine, the Merlin 45 series. Some variants of the engine was used, such as Merlin 45M, which has a crop supercharger impeller installed. This engine produced 1,585 horsepower or 1,182 kilowatts at an altitude of 2,750 feet 
or 800-338 meters for those metric beeps. Thus, increasing its climb rate of 4,720 feet per minute or 21.6 meters per second at a height of 2,000 feet or 610 meters. Other upgrade that had been applied to the Spartan was a blown cockpit hood to improve visibility and headroom of the pilot, a modified and improved windscreen assembly, a new propeller type was also installed, as well as alloy made ailerons to replace the fabric made ailerons of early wing types. Before we continue on the history, let me make you a short commercial break. So as you can see, I use a modeling clay that acts as an improvised gap filler for my plastic model. Now you may call me cheap for putting a plastic model with a clay, but I cannot afford the gap fillers that usually been used for plastic models in the local hobby store. So I tend to improvise one and try to use a wax based mold modeling clay with a mixture of my plastic cement and then apply it carefully on the applied clay on the lines. That's it for now and uh, let's continue on to the history of the plane. Do you see these bumps that you can see in the wings as the video we creating on? So here's a quick fact for you guys. Those bumps you see on the wings that is directly aligned the long barrel is called cannon blisters or blisters in short. It is an aerodynamical feature for wing to accommodate an armament with large caliber and large magazine usually in the form of drab magazine. But one thing that makes the Spitfire Mark V B drop is distinguishable is the presence of a large Vokis air filter fitted under the nose. Due to the design of the air filter, the speed of the airflow to the supercharger is reduced, having a negating effect in terms of the flight performance of the aircraft. This includes its top speed is reduced by 8 miles per hour or 13 kilometers per hour for you metric folks and its climb rate by 600 feet per minute or 3.04 meters per second fortunately this slight nerf of the performance is considered enough to be deemed acceptable by the air ministry aside from applying a desert camouflage scheme this barn is also having a desert survival gear just behind the pilot seat and larger oil tank there are 3,911 Mark V Bs were produced after the war's end. And if you want to know more about this barn and other Spitfires, you can always visit the link's description that I have researched in this making of this video. So, now you know about the history of the Mark V B drop, let's now enjoy the building of my model. As you can see, we will apply the light blue coloring on the, on the other side of the plane. I use two coats, two to three coats, sorry, of the paint in order to maximize the spread. Now, once the on the side of the aircraft is dried, I will now paint the cockpit. For this part, I will use light green in order to paint the interior of it. And then mixing the crimson and a little bit of brown in order to apply it on the headrest as well as the chair of the cockpit. I use a fine brush tip 
paint brush in order to paint precisely on the cockpit's interior as well as adding details such as gauges and accelerometers inside. I use also the same color for the interior green with the grass of my hand I will paint the inner part of the cockpit glass with a green paint. Once the paint is about to dry, I will use a small stick to scrape off the excess runoffs. And to apply the cockpit glass, I use the Elmer's glue or any clear glue that you guys have to apply it clearly when drying. Now to paint the camouflage of the aircraft. I use yellow ochre, burnt umber, and a little bit of white to mix together to make a color page of the base coat. Then I add water to make it thin. And then I start painting away. I use my 20 cm brush in order to apply the paint on the large areas evenly. And smaller brush to apply on hard to reach areas that the big, big brush cannot reach. I do this. 2 to 5 coats. The reason why I use 5 coats is because of how thin I made the paint. That way it contours to the details and not to overfill it. After the base color has been applied, I'm now going to paint the main color of the camouflage. Burp umber of the paint and thin it with water and use my soft brush to apply it hand free. This gives me two to four times to paint it evenly and I let them overnight in order to set them. I got tired from using the large brush so I used the smaller brush instead to paint it carefully. It took me to realize that I, the paint is a bit darker than I ever thought which strongly contrasts to the base beige coat of the plane so I just keep on going anyways instead. Once that dried, I'm going to paint now the propellers. Using the acrylic paint black and a soft brush tool, as well as a mix of water to make it thin evenly, I apply a few strokes on the propeller blades, then start on with the wheels. Then I cut on the aircraft bombs, as well as the small parts, and apply it together with the cement. I take off the landing gear appendages and then assemble it right away with the wheel. I use also the black color to paint the insides of the exhausts and the air intake of the plane. I decided to use clay as a holding point so that I can easily manage it. For the metallic surfaces, I use the metallic paint and a little bit of grey and mix them together with white and start painting the engine exhausts as well as the hydraulic systems of the landing gear.
I also painted some small details from the cannons as well as small details of the landing gear. Once the paint is dry, I scrape off the paint from the wheels and apply it with the cement onto the landing gear. I attach the tail wheel from the assembly of the plane. It fits snugly. And I thought it was cut off because it's so small it is. And now I attach now the main landing gear. It's important to scrape off the paint before you apply the things with the cement. Otherwise it will be a messy feat. I use what yellow now to paint the other details. And forward on painting the propellers. Propeller hub and the other foot, and start assembling right away and put in my plane. I use the red also for the gun ports and color green for the bomb. Once the paint is dry, I just put them in without glue or cement. The plane goes so beautiful, but let's make it beautiful by adding decals. For this decal, I gotta choose whether the Anot or Tol. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll choose the RAF 417 Squadron of 1942. So for this thing, you have to be mindful. I put a one part glue and one part water and mix it together and apply it to the areas that I will apply with the decal on the plane. That way, it will avoid the so-called silvering effect or the decal got a little bit of silvering due to the presence of the surface area. And let it dry. Once that dried, it's time for the major build. This is my favorite part. I used the water vinegar mixture as a substitute of decal firmer. I submerge it for about 30 seconds and use my brush to check if it's moving. Once moving, I'm gonna put them in a the tissue to dry excess and carefully apply it on my model. This takes precision and patience, and also a little bit of firming. Using Q-tips, I absorb the excessive moisture of the liquid I've used, and contour it, making it contour on the wings of the aircraft and the details. Be mindful though, the decals are so sensitive that even the slightest mistouch it will stick together. It is frustrating because the anode part, I got very frustrated. It takes me about 5 minutes to fix it after the letter T got stick to each other. But luckily it doesn't tear. Otherwise I would just switch back to the doll. Now the plane has a decals, it's time for the final touch. Panel marking. For this, I use black paint, an isopropyl alcohol, and water. One part black paint, three parts alcohol, three parts of water. Mix together and you got your very own improvised wash. This wash is also useful for panel made, lining, giving a bit of effect. So I use the you know, 4B pencil because of how frustrating the paint first but then I realized the pencil I use is going to chip the paint off so go back to the panel mixture I made. Once the panel liner is about to dry, I use my cotton bud q-tip to brush them off a little bit gently then downward towards the gravity or the airflow of the aircraft to give him a
After a bit of touches of effects as well, the model is finished. I'm glad you enjoyed this video so far. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like and share your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to share this to your friends and family to keep yourself updated for more content like this. Anyways, stay safe guys. See you in my next video. Peace.